Hey there, friends. Coming at you with a very special post-race edition of the pre-ride show presented by FSA. We are inside District Cycles here the day after uh, Cole's big win at uh, Mid-South. I'm here with the, the winner, Cole Patton, brother. Uh, did you sleep well last night? How you feeling? Oh, I didn't sleep very well, but feeling, feeling a little How's slow. the recovery score? What was the recovery uh, score? I, I try not to look, but it was 23% okay. this morning. That, that, uh, I think that's evidence of a really hard effort yesterday. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I'm a couple coffees deep already and still <laughs> barely waking up. But, good, good. Yeah. Um, I want to get into the race and chop all that up with you, but uh -huh. I thought it'd be interesting maybe to find out a little more about you. Um, Where'd you grow up? Where, where in the States here did you, did you grow up yeah. as, as a kid? Yeah, I grew up in central Washington. Um, my family owns a bike shop, ski uh, shop, okay. so that's what kind of got me into racing. Uh, so bikes have been a part of your life for as long as you can even remember. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I really started racing in high school, but then uh, I moved to Durango, Colorado okay. for Fort Lewis College. Yep, and, and that's a well-known cycling team yep, out of that college. Yep. yep, so lots of pros in, in uh, Durango, and that's kind of really what fueled my my love for racing and thought maybe hey maybe I can do this so. was it always off-road was was there a mix of road bikes racing in there too always off-road and always okay. mountain bikes yeah this this gravel thing is very new to me yeah so it's it's been really fun to kind of learn as I go I think you're catching on though I think that clearly <laughs> uh, you've got some a, a knack for it thank you um, uh, how, how did college go did you guys win a lot of titles like what were some of the early yeah. uh, successes that you had in college yeah, college was incredible. I had such a good team there. Um, all of my best friends were racing mountain bikes with me, and uh, we won three national titles with the team. Wow. Um, I had a couple individual titles, but the, the community at Fort Lewis College really is what took me to that next level and, and made me want more and more. And yeah, I, I, You're still a young guy. We're not too far out of college, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I graduated in 2019. Okay. So, yeah, and now I'm, now I'm racing full time. Not, not a bad transition. Most people have to go and, and uh, go through that career counseling and, and find jobs. You're like, no, forget that. I'm just going to jump into bike racing. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. I mean, I, I graduated college and then that was right when COVID hit. So we didn't have any racing and it was like, well, should I get a job? Should I keep racing? And, and really that's when Orange Seal came in and, and fully believed in me. So yeah. can't thank them enough. Um, prior to yesterday, what was maybe your biggest signature win? Probably Iceman. Okay. Yeah, in November, um, I, I had an awesome ride there in Michigan. Super fun event, mountain bike race. Was it any more icy than yesterday's start? Uh, <laughs> it was. It was about the same. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday was cold. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it, it was awesome, and uh, I think this is my biggest win to date now. Right on. So, um, does that mountain bike background and the bike handling that that sport demands? lends itself really well to gravel racing, I would think, right? That transition, yeah. make, I would think it gives you a significant advantage. For me, I, I really just notice all the disadvantages that I have and okay. all the things I have to learn. Like what, what would be, what, what's an example of that? Riding in the group, and, and I'm sure many others can attest okay. to this, I, I really don't know what to do, and sometimes I don't know how the rotation's working, or we hit a crosswind, and okay. people start echeloning, and um, yeah, I, I have a lot to learn, yeah. and uh, I'm super thankful that everyone's kind of welcomed me in. Um, I have a lot of mentors that we're racing beside, especially Dennis. And I mean, there are so many times yesterday that he's yelling at me, what are you doing? You know, so, okay. so I have a lot to learn, but um, yeah, the, the handling and the skills of the mountain bike, I think definitely help. I can be a little more efficient in some sections. Um, I think I can corner pretty well, yeah. but, um, but yeah, in these long races, just saving energy, riding well in the group makes such a difference and hopefully I can keep improving there. Well, and you're used to races that start off really hard from the gun, yeah. like the sprints at the beginning, it's, much like a cyclocross yeah, yeah. race in cross country mountain bike, the sprints at the beginning. Yeah. Right? So it's so hard for me to be patient in these races and, and I've struggled. I raced three gravel races last year and huh. hour three, I was just done. Okay. Being absolutely blown. So I really wanted to be patient yesterday and try to save more energy, not make any dumb moves, and and I did. And, um, but yeah, I, I have some I have some stuff to work on, and it's fun. It's exciting to me. That there's so much to learn. We talked in our in our uh, first interview this week with you about the training camp you guys were in in uh, in Spain. Yep. Um, did you work on some of that in order to get that more that three four hour endurance yeah. to have more at the end? What was that specifically? Where is it just harder like? 
maybe I would call it like a, a harder tempo rides for a longer period of time rather than big time interval uh, sessions? Yeah, yeah, my training's completely changed. Um, I mean, I was riding almost every day with Dennis and the, the big training that we did, I think that really helped make the difference is <clears throat> we just ride four hours, five hours, and then after that, we do all, all the intervals, all the intensity. Oh, okay. Put the intervals at the end. Yeah, and, okay. and that I'd never done. And when I was first doing it, I would just die. I mean, I would be so bonked, just cross-eyed, hanging onto his draft on the way home. But uh, I think we made a lot of gains and, and improved a lot throughout the camp. And yesterday was, I, I wasn't expecting that at all. So it was super exciting to see that it paid off. Well, let's let's break that race up a little bit. Yeah. Um, it was when we checked in this, in the morning. It was 19 degrees uh, yes. out here on the on the start so line. So cold. Yeah, uh, yeah. everybody was bundled up, but the energy was intense. Like um, probably I got to think probably one of the biggest races you've done just from a numbers perspective. Yeah. And but also to the hitters that were in that lineup, and we had yeah, yeah, all everyone. the all the top pros were here. Yeah. I can't think of too many that weren't. Um, is there a little bit of a wow? This is kind of cool. Like looking around and seeing that. Like a welcome to the, the big time moment. For yeah. You? Uh, I mean, I was I was nervous, and and of course I'm always excited to line up with those guys, but intimidated for sure. Okay. I mean, I've I've never had a, a a great result at a gravel race, so I didn't know what to expect, and I'm I'm just trying to learn from everyone around me. There's there's such so much depth in the field, but um, but yeah, I guess I was just nervous at the beginning. Okay, uh, we rolled for a few miles before yes. we hit the dirt, um, and we're following along with the guys from Vermont Overland too because they were on course with you. So we were picking up mm -hmm. a little bit of the race. Ted took the TV flyer earlier, yeah. right at right when he hit the gravel. Yep. Any reaction in the group there? Or everybody just kind of uh, let him go. And I mean, when a guy like Ted goes, everyone gets nervous. Okay. So I, I think there was. Everyone was pushing. Ted's so strong though. I'm, he yeah. just he can just take off off the front, so uh, super impressive. Um, but yeah, I think I think everyone kind of started to work together to, to bring that back. So that washing machine effect kind of yeah. at that front. And yeah, yeah, and there were a few other. Uh, there there was another flyer early on, but uh, it, it really stayed pretty together the whole day. Right. And so. that's where we caught you guys was at that mile 24 section, the right turn onto the mud. Yeah. There was a pretty big group by then. Whatever, oh, yeah. Whoever the had been out front got, got, got absorbed. Yeah. Funny story there. Um, it People were running. People got yep. off and ran because it was so technical. I got off my bike. I'm running. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice behind me. Cole, on your left. And I look back and it's Sevilla, my girlfriend, just like, get out of my way. Nice. <laughs> are you kidding me? Okay. So it was it was cool. I mean, there was still a huge group. There were women with us still at that yeah. point. And yeah. everyone was throwing elbows. So that's something I'm kind of used to racing was the mountain bikes. Was the concern coming out of that sector and making sure you're at the right spot and Definitely. not having to chase back in? That's where a big separation happened yeah. because the first few riders, uh, Payson had a really good line through he there. He took the left side. Left side, that had, yeah. Yeah. right along the fence it had no mud it was yeah and that to me just, it just reeks of the the pro move of coming out the day before and looking Definitely. at things and going i'm gonna ride that one i looked at it i didn't even see that line so right, right. yeah it's it's uh, important to do the homework i guess and yep. i didn't do it very well but uh but yeah i was panicking through there everyone those guys that took the good line were were really on it and uh i was afraid we'd get caught out and but uh, yeah, Dennis helped me keep calm and okay. slowly get back up, so. Um, you mentioned Dennis a couple times. He was working with you guys on your training camp. Yep. Um, what, are, what are some examples of the type of things he would talk to you about while, on, while in the race on the road? Yeah, and the biggest thing, we have this saying, says hold your horses, because I always have the tendency to just. And it sounds so much cooler in the Dutch accent. I know, right? yeah, hold their horses, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> You'll have to get him saying it, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just, I don't know how to pace myself. And anytime there's a gap, I just want to close it as fast as I right, possibly get there, can. Yeah. And uh, having patience is super important. And okay. uh, yeah, I'm, I, I would have made a lot of dumb mistakes without him. So we come out of that section, did it and did it kind of compress back in and whoever was, yeah. and we caught, we caught got on our same 20, 25. Yeah, it took so a while together. and we were in kind of a, a lead group of 10 or 15 riders and we tried to stay away, but uh, I think it was Colin Strickland pulled back the second group and okay. then we were all together again uh, before the feed zone. Was there any detente at that point? Did everybody just kind of sit up and, and relax? Everyone or was kind it still... of sat up, okay. yeah. Okay. As soon as we got back together, um, it, it was it was strange. I mean, there were, there are were times where we are just really going easy, and times where 
It was full gas. And you're, you're, is there a nervous moment in, in you, like Definitely. looking around, going, "What's what's who's yeah. about to drop a bomb?" What, here? What's gonna happen? Yeah, yeah. Am I in the right spot? Right. So. Um, Bobby sprinkled. There was one official checkpoint or aid station where you could get help from your team, but there were a couple other uh, unofficial ones that were out there, yeah. bourbon and things like that. Yeah. Any talk in the group about stopping for a grilled cheese or anything like no that? No talk. But uh, Orange Sea was getting shots at mile 92, and yeah. Uh, Pete stopped and took a shot, I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right on. I was not in, in the condition to do so. No, right. At that point, the race was pretty well on. We'll get there. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, we heard something about the actual uh, aid station itself. Did some guys race through the aid station and did that set off alarm bells? I think uh, no one really attacked through it. Okay. Um, we stopped for really briefly to dump quick, some clothes. Quick bottle, dump clothes. New bottles. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it, it was hectic. I took off a bunch of clothes while we were riding uh -huh. just so it would be ready. It's a pro move, bro. That's not easy to do. Yeah, it was, we were taking off leg warmers. And, <laughs> yeah, but we, we survived it. Um, but, yeah, no, I think it kind of stayed together. No one made any attacks or moves. I am, and I remember seeing John at uh, Unbound last year in terms of those checkpoints and the aid yeah. station. It's a NASCAR-like environment, right? Yeah. Like, the yeah. stuff is ready. Bike over here. Lube, you're changing yeah, gear, yeah. bottles, whatever. It's, it's really efficient process, right? And it's awesome. The the team did so well. We had three of us come in all at the same time. Pete too. Okay. He was kind of pitting with us, yep. and we we're all out in 30 seconds. Bikes were lubed, bottles were changed, okay. food in our pockets. I'm so. always curious. Is there is there much chit chat at all at the front end of a race like that? It, whether whether encouraging or just hey, how's you, how you doing? Or yeah, you know, how's the how's the life? Things like yeah. that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, from my perspective, I think there's a lot. Okay. Uh, in a mountain bike race, nobody talks. You're breathing too damn hard. Yeah, in a gravel race, there's a lot of banter going okay. back and forth. And is it is it like um, is it a little is it a little there's, is it a little bit there's like, some aggression. Okay. A, a lot more aggression than I'm used to. Okay. But okay. Uh, and especially in a race like yesterday, it was so tactical, and people are upset that some people aren't pulling or someone's making some okay. weird moves and yeah there, there's a lot Not of holding a line or whatever right yeah, yeah. Okay. okay yeah um so we're about mile eh, a little over let's call it a little over halfway what happened after the feed zone like how did it how did the race kind of break out over the next 15 20 miles or so yeah the the one part that was that i got really nervous about there's a uh, like a bridge that you couldn't cross mm -hmm. and uh, there was a route of single track through this ravine and I didn't know it was there. I think it was at mile 50 or something. Okay. Um, but I think there were four guys that got away. Uh, Payson was one of them. I think Griffin Easter. Yep. Um, I can't really remember. I think Adam was there and I thought that they were gone. They, they had a super fast line, they hit it, and then everyone in the back had to get off their bike and run. Okay. Um, this was a time that I was panicking and Dennis calmed me down, okay. but, uh, but yeah, that was that was a good move on their part. And I think they, at one point, they had over 30 seconds on us and they okay. were working together well. Okay. But we slowly brought them back and then it was group racing again. Okay. Um, we came into mile 85 or so, still as a pretty big group. We saw yep. you, we caught you guys there. Yep. Um, and then kind of make a nice turn into the headwind. You're yeah. You guys are coming back into town now. Um, we caught you at about, we saw John at like probably mile 85. The group's still good before the crash. Yeah. Um, let's get to that crash. Like, mm -hmm. w what might have caused that? How did that happen? Any idea? Or were you able to see it? Or how did you avoid it, I guess? Yeah. Uh, I got really lucky. I, I was just a little bit back. I don't like following so close on the descents because I can't see the lines. Um, and some of those guys are just in the draft the whole time. Right. Um, and maybe it's not as efficient for me, but it, I lucked out in avoiding the crash. And yeah. the roads were just so ruddy, it, it was bound to happen. It was super easy to make a So easy, one on little twitch like that, yeah. yeah. And at that point, it was getting really tactical. Everyone was kind of looking back, seeing if anyone was gonna make moves. And um, yeah, it was nasty. I hope that uh, uh, it, it was hard to see, especially Payson yeah. go down. Payson, yeah. we love you, buddy. Heal up, yes. thinking about you. Definitely, yeah. We we got to talk to Payson last night, and it was nice to to hear his voice. We saw the picture. He looked a little uh, yeah. a little more fiend up, but yeah, yeah. He's gonna... <laughs> he was in good spirits. Good. He's, he's a fighter, so yeah, yeah. He'll be back soon. Okay. So where I first saw you, we were at that right turn at mile 92, 93, mm -hmm. and we're guiding some of the 50 milers through to make sure you guys had a clean path. And there you come around the corner, and I didn't really even see the group yet. Mm -hmm. When did you launch off the front of that, and why? 
I was not expecting to make a move like that. Okay. Um, but there were attacks going. There was a team that was sending attacks. Um, they had two teammates in our group. The Lauf, the Lauf team? Yep, okay, the Lauf yeah. team. And uh, we were pulling him back, working super hard. And then Pete and Brennan were kind of pushing on the front, throwing attacks. And there well, was- Brennan had to chase back in, right? Because he got caught up in Brennan the crash. crashed. Ted crashed. They both chased back in. Okay. I was blown away that they came back. Yeah. We, I mean, we we didn't push, but we were just trying to keep the guy in sight that was off the front at that time. Right. And those guys came right back. And Brennan, when he caught us, went straight to the front and attacked. Love it. Like, what a boss. And that had to worry a bit because oh, yeah. Homeboy can put out 500 oh, watts yeah, for a long period huge. of time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was super impressive, but there was just a little lull, a little hesitation, and uh, I had some momentum, and it was a slight uphill, and I was like, ah, well, maybe I'll okay. send one. And honestly, I was just thinking, ah, maybe I can set Dennis up. If I attack, everyone's gonna try to chase me. Okay. Then maybe we can set Dennis up for the sprint. And I look back, and the gap was bigger than I expected, and just put my head down, and then immediately turned into headwind, and I thought it was over. So about a 10 mile, 10 mile time trial there. At yeah. The end. So those yeah. intervals are paying off now, right? Those post, I guess. Those late ride intervals are paying <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it was good. I, I think that there was some disorganization in the group and everything worked out. And yeah, I, I just, I knew that I shot, I sh shot my shot and there was no going back, so. Love it. Yeah. Um, what's that feeling like coming across the line, being able to raise your arms, look back and not see the chasers? Yeah. Did, did, you, I, did you look back? Were you here and just took I, a peek back just to see? I was looking back and then the, the follow car was right behind me, so I had no idea. I, I didn't know if they were closing or anything. I just had my head down. And finally, I looked back right at the finish line. I couldn't see anyone and I was just in disbelief. Okay. So. Are you sore from the hug that Bobby gave you? <laughs> yes, okay. yeah. You're, you're not a big guy, so you might have to be careful. Might oh, break your shoulders. So awesome! <laughs> he is incredible, and what an event he put on. Right so on. I think he hugged every person that crossed the finish line. The over under on hugs the other night was five thousand. We blew that. We blew that away by insane. Friday night. So yeah. before the race, we were way over. Yeah. Um, does this win now? I know you were geared up. You're gearing up for um, Whiskey Fifty. Yep. But this big win in the gravel world does that change your race program at all for the year? We're going to still focus mostly on the mountain bike. Uh, I I think it gives me a lot of confidence. That's kind of the thing that it changes um but i'm really focusing on the grand prix the lifetime grand prix right. so i'll be doing unbound tusher okay um big sugar okay. so and rule of three in bentonville okay uh so i'll do some gravel and uh yeah it's it's nice to to start it off with some confidence All right uh, big party last night at the Orange Seal house? Oh, I was so tired. <laughs> we, we had a nice dinner. My parents are in town, so it was really nice. The, That's great. The whole family's here. You still uh, have the bike shop? Is the bike shop still going up in Washington? Yep, still going. They're what city? Give uh, a little shout out. Wenatchee, Washington, Arlberg Sports. All right. So, yep, it's going good. Man, I can't tell you uh, what a great uh, personality you bring to the sport. We love the fact that there's these younger, super talented riders coming in. It's got to scare the pants off these four world tour guys <laughs> that think that they can just retire in and win a bunch of gravel races. So, man, you punched a big ticket here. We're really proud of you. Thank you so much. Right on. Really appreciate it. Cole Patton, your winner at Mid-South yesterday, folks. Thanks for tuning in to our pre-ride shows all weekend here. We appreciate you. Subscribe to our channel so you get to see all the fun stuff that we're going to do all throughout the remainder of this year. Thanks for looking in. That race is so epic. That was my first like long race. Okay. I mainly I was just like <laughs> terrified. The group the group riding I was just puckered the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> but well, that's intense too. That it and, is. And, yeah. That, that first fast. we're changing it this year, so it's not going to be so fast and condensed and such yeah. a big group. We're going to send everybody straight uphill. Oh, nice. That so double cool. peak that yeah. you did at the end. Yeah. That you're going to go up that first and then down. So we're going to oh, hopefully cool. with a two mile climb. Yeah. Stretch it out. There's a single track piece of, the, the thing you came around Double Peak after you climbed to the top, yep, that I you're gonna do that. that first. Cool. And then downhill, so we think it'll come into that very, uh, the other dirt section much more strung out. Yeah. A little safer, be avoid good. any massive, yeah. you know, crashes. That was crazy. But I mean, exciting, but crazy. Yeah. <laughs>